What if I told you there's a way to create incredible motion graphics where every design change automatically updates your entire animation? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how Houdini's procedural workflow can revolutionize the way you create motion graphics. My name is Nick Donatelli. I'm a creative director and motion designer with almost 10 years of experience. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorite tool for most 3D and even some 2D work, Houdini. Now I know a lot of people are using Cinema 4D for this type of stuff, but I wanna demonstrate Houdini and show you why I really love its workflow. It's just insane amount of customizability that I find unbeatable. Houdini works a bit different than other softwares in that it is fully node-based. This allows you to flow through ideas super quickly since the entire thing is procedural. Now, I know you may have heard this term procedural, but I want to take a step back and define what that actually means. Proceduralism is a method of working where you build out tools instead of assets. Every change that you make is just changing an algorithm, a slider, a value, rather than manually moving around spline points or vertices. Why this is helpful is it allows you to make changes without ever having to commit anything into place. This allows you to just iterate on NDS super quickly. You could pump out five different looks of the same thing just by moving around a slider. Now, I know this might sound a bit heady, so let's dive into some examples that I built out. All right, I'm gonna do a quick overview of Houdini's layout just so you can kind of get yourself familiar with what nodes are. Now, a node is a single function that either creates geometry or manipulates geometry or manipulates attributes. And I'll, I'll walk you through what that looks like. So I'm gonna make a sphere. This one is just a geometry node. You can change the type of sphere. You can change the radius. You can change how many subdivisions are on it. It's essentially just a container for your individual actions. So you can see here, I'm gonna make a transform node, which is just that. You can you know, do any sort of rotation, translation. I'm gonna drop this expression that I wrote so that it just goes back and forth. So now we have an animated sphere. And now I'm gonna give it an attribute. I'm gonna, this one is called CD. That's Houdini's color attribute. I'm gonna make it red for visibility. And now we're going to use this to control another piece of geometry. So similar, we're going to start with a grid. And then we're going to remesh the grid. All this does is create more points for us, which I'm going to make even more. And we will also give this one a color so that they have different colors. I'm going to make this one black. And now I'm going to do an attribute transfer. What this does is it takes the attributes we have from this input and drags it onto this one. So in, right now it's all red. That's because we have this distance all the way up. So if we bring this down, you can see it starts to just center around where our sphere points are. You can bring up this blend width just to give it a nice smooth effect. And now if you hit play, you can see we are transferring the red onto the grid geometry. Now what's cool is you can take this attribute and I'm gonna remap it so it's color and I'm gonna change it to an attribute that I'm gonna call lift. And now if I create an attribute noise, this defaults to color, I'm gonna set this noise to position. And you can see we get a bunch of deforming geometry which is neat in itself, but I only want that to happen in the red. So you can turn on this blend, change this to use attribute, and now I'll use that lift attribute that I created. And now at, when you hit play, you can see we are only deforming around where our sphere is. So if I highlight that, you can see our sphere underneath, just pushing out the surface. In this noise, you have plenty of other controls. You can make it just manipulate the Y, so it's only going up. You can change the amplitude, the size of the noise, and then you could even give the noise some animation. This was just a rundown of how nodes work in Houdini. Let's now dive into a further example so we can see the true power of its proceduralism. But before we move on, make sure to subscribe to the School of Motion YouTube channel and hit the like button if you want to see more Houdini content in the future. All right, we're in Houdini now. And I know if you're looking at this, it looks like a lot of nodes. I promise you there's nothing super complicated here. It's actually all just simple geometry nodes, no simulations, no physics. Now, you can see if I come up to this initial box shape, which in fact is just a very simple box, I can change around the size of the box and the entire look of this automatically updates. This whole setup 
is what proceduralism is. You're building out a tool that'll just automatically make these changes that you want later. The fun part about procedural modeling is nothing is ever committed into place versus traditional modeling, where you might have to move a vertice and then have to figure out how to get it back to where it was. Here you can see we have this roof pitch, which is just taking two vertices and moving it up. And I can change the pitch of the roof. As I do that, it changes the entire setup. The proceduralism element here is that you can just come down to this roof pitch node and say, I didn't actually like the angle of it. You just turn it off and it flattens everything right back out. It's as if this node never happened and you don't have to do any calculations to get the vertices back to where they were. You just turn it on and off. Now, this whole setup, everything in here is changeable and art directable. If I come over to this node, you can see I am resampling these points, which affects the window. So as I bring it up, the windows get a little larger and you get less of them. It's automatically calculating how wide this thing is and filling it in based on that value. I have the same thing over here. This one is changing the amount of logs. So this number is actually corresponding to how many are in the vertical. So if I bring it up, you can start to see that it gets a little denser and it starts to give the illusion of making this thing larger since you know each of those logs is a tree. So if I bring it down, it starts to look a bit more like toy-esque, Lincoln loggy. Now, I know this might look like it's doing something complicated under the hood, but it's really just linking up values. This entire setup, including the animation that I'm about to show you, took me under an hour. Now, you could probably build something similar to this using Cinema's MoGraph tools. And just like that, there's actually a MoGraph plugin you can get for Houdini. It's free and it's very powerful. But the way I built this is fully customizable, meaning if there's a small change that needs to happen that wasn't put into the tool, you can go in and change it yourself. This whole tool is built within what's called a VOP, which looks like this. I know this looks complicated, but I, I swear this is really just some simple manipulations that with a basic knowledge, you'd all be able to figure out. Now, what's really cool about procedural animation is as I hit play, I can change the in and out points. Let's say I want to make this faster. Now it speeds up. And all I did is just change the value. There's no keyframes. I can come in here and I could affect how it scales up. So now they just kind of pop on. And the nice part about this is it's automatically calculating the things such as like the height of our cabin. So if I come back up to our initial look, I can be changing this live and the animation actually stays the same. It just continues to update as we make our changes. You can go in, you can make the, the logs a little denser. You could maybe, you know, let's say you want a little less windows. All of this is happening and it's just fully procedural. You took the time in the front to set it up. And so now you get to just make these changes endlessly. I hope you're enjoying this video so far and getting excited about Houdini's potential. While School of Motion doesn't offer any Houdini courses just yet, their all access program is perfect for motion designers looking to level up their skills. You'll get comprehensive training in Unreal, Blender, Cinema 4D, and much more. Head over to schoolofmotion.com slash all access to see their full curriculum and join thousands of other motion designers who are also leveling up their skills. Let's get back into Houdini. Now, this has been cool, but I wanna show you how this works on something a little more organic. All right, here you see we have Houdini's rubber toy geometry. This is just one of their default pieces of geometry to help you mess around with. It looks like a little dragon guy, so I wanted to give him some spikes. So what I did is I made this spline, which you can fully edit here, just moving around points. And then I rayed it onto the surface of our geometry and I copied on these spikes. Now I'm gonna talk about the spikes in a second, but first I wanna show you how this is really cool that you can just come back in and manipulate anything without again, having to manually move points. I have this spline and as I move it around, you can see that it still makes everything stick onto the surface. Even if I put it way out here, it'll still find the closest point. So, you know, you can kind of make like a custom curvature, bring it down to these ends. Maybe you want more or less, you can then go over into this resample node and just add more points so you can get more spikes. And you can continuously update your look. Again, no baking anything into place. These spikes are just simple cones that I manipulated, you know, pinching down the edges 
you can kind of change the look here where if I go back to our end results, you can see as I move this around, you're kind of changing the shape of it. You can get like a punk rock look here. Maybe you want something a little more friendly and rounded. And, you know, maybe this is too much geometry. You can turn off this subdivision. You get some little harsher spikes, which is also a cool look depending on what you're going for. Now, I mentioned Houdini's attributes. Now I want to demonstrate what that actually looks like. There's one called P scale. What P scale does is affect the overall scale of the geometry that you're copying onto points. What I have here is I'm taking the curve of the spline that we made and ramping it along P scale. So if I take, say, like this end down, you can see that I'm actually changing the scale of the points in real time. And you can mess around until you get a look that you're happy with. Let's say I love that. Or let's say you hate it. Let's say you actually don't like the look of this. You want, you want the spikes to be all the same again. Instead of having to maybe go back and change the curvature of this, you could just turn off this node and there, it's right back at where you started. All right, let's take this a step further. Houdini has what's called a scatter node where you put a bunch of points along the surface and it actually takes some of the attributes from the initial geometry. So you can see if I turn on point normals, you can see everything's pointing outwards. So when I then come down here and copy on our spikes, you can see everything sticks out like a pine cone. Because it's taking point normals, it's really easy to make things kind of cling to the surface. All you have to do is rotate the initial spikes. So I just rotated it here, almost 90 degrees. You left a little bit just so you'd get some edge. And you essentially have a cool scale setup. All you had to do there was just copy the same piece of geometry onto some points. I see that there's more here, but that's because I'm about to show you an even more complicated setup. What I'm doing now is I want to make these points grow. So I measured the distance from this sphere, which you can see. And if I hit play, it's actually just iterating along the line. If I take this sphere and I move it around, it uses wherever it is as the starting point for the animation. You're updating it live. And then if I come back down into our copy node and I remap this growth to our P scale like we've done before, you can see we get this cool growth effect, which as I come into this sphere and move it around, you're still getting live updates. It's super fun. It's, I love seeing these things in real time. And then on top of this, I added a little bit of movement. So you can see that the spikes get some motion, just a small amount. And now I'm going to show one of those classic Houdini effects, a knitting effect. So to start with this effect, I, I switched up and just copied on these little rings, nothing complicated, just a, a circle essentially that is I duplicated so that you would have two of them kind of intersecting. And I copied that on. Now, if I hit play, you can see we still have our nice growth. But right now, they're kind of scaling up. That's actually not what I want. I want it to thread through each other. So if I turn off our scale, you see that's happening. But there's not threading happening. Afterwards, I then measured along the circle and had that grow. So now if I hit play, it slows down a little bit now that we just have a little more geometry happening. But you can see we actually have these threads growing. Now, I want to show you a cool way to just kind of bring this all together. If I come up here, we have our initial geometry that I am transferring our growth animation onto. I can then use that growth animation to just do this little wiggle effect just to kind of breathe some life into it. And now if I head back down at the bottom, you can see we have our growth effect where these little threads just kind of grow over and turn our guy into this little knitted creature. What's so nice about Houdini is you're building all of your tools from scratch, meaning you find these clusters of nodes that do things a certain way when you stack them, and you're just kind of switching them around, and that's how you're coming up with different looks. You find three things that are super simple setups, stack them, now you have a super complicated effect. And again, all of this was relatively quick. You could get this done in just an hour or two. I hope this was insightful into the way Houdini works and started to make it feel a little less scary. 
Its procedural workflow makes it so useful for iterating on ideas quickly during the look development stage of real world projects. If you're using it, I'd love to hear what made you switch over to Houdini in the comments below. And if you like this little taste into Houdini, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell below to get notified when we release more tutorials. Head to schoolemotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum, and please don't hesitate to reach out to the team if you have any questions about it. All right, that'll do it for me. Thank you for watching. I've been Nick Donatelli. Until next time.